everyone, welcome to another Easy Links Live. I'm your host, Ryan Bukema, and on today's show, today's show, we've got one heck of a treat for you. Joining me today, live in studio, our project manager, my good friend, Vijay Rangarajan, is going to be here to talk about some cool new stuff. Well, it, it's actually been out for a while, but we just want to kind of reiterate some neat things about it. So he's our product manager in charge of Appliance Center. He's in charge of uh, Automation Center, and he's also in charge of Commissions. So today, we're going to be talking about Commissions 2.0. So shortly, VJ will join me right here, uh, and we'll be able to talk about Commissions 2.0. He's also going to chat with us about something that we have in the system um, that's coming out. It's a real great feature. It's called the Automatic Change Request Confirmation. So this is designed to help save you time. So you don't have to go in and actually do the confirmations. If everything syncs up, system does it for you. So pretty nice. Uh, but before we begin that, before we begin that, I do want to touch on some house cleaning items. And the first thing I want to talk about is going to be our deprecation of Internet Explorer. Now, uh, if you've logged into our site uh, at any time, you've noticed um, across the top, we do have kind of like a banner up there. So real quick, if we could pull up Internet Explorer for everybody. Here we go. Uh, you'll see right there across the top, you've got the warning message that lets you know that on June 25th, we will be deprecating uh, support for IE. Now, now, why are we doing this? Well, this is kind of in response to um, Microsoft's statement that they will no longer support the browser for, with uh, use for any of their web-based applications. So in order for EasyLinks to stay um, current with all of the, the latest internet practices, we too will stop support for IE on June 25th. But what does that mean for you guys? What does that mean with respect to the easy login? Uh, does that mean you just can't use easy login anymore? The answer is no. Uh, you'll still be able to use easy login, but you have different browsers that you can utilize for it. So if we actually, on the page that we have pulled up, if we go up to the top right corner and click on the question mark, this is our help widget. And here you can find a lot of really great helpful information. So if we type in there, uh, Internet Explorer deprecation, it's going to pull up uh, an FAQ document. And if we go into the FAQ document uh, here, you'll be able to see all the really cool information about it. And one of the things that we note is that if you still want to use the uh, easy login, you can. You just want to utilize uh, Chrome or Microsoft Edge. Those browsers will support it. So after the 25th, when IE is no longer going to be supported in our system, you still can use the easy login just by accessing it with those browsers. So definitely want to keep you guys up to speed on that stuff. The next thing that we want to talk about is going to be something that a lot of people have asked about. A lot of people have asked uh, easy links with respect to uh, uh, what's going on with MFA, multi-factor authentication. Uh, some of the questions are kind of around why is EasyLinks uh, doing MFA? And really, to put it quite simply, uh, it's all about data security, right? Uh, if you think about today's age with phishing emails on a, a running rampant and you hear about all these big accounts and things being hacked, I mean, don't you want an extra layer of security to make sure people can't get into EasyLinks and get your insurance information? I mean, let's, let's talk about your insurance information. What do they have there? They've got like a uh, social security number. You've got date of birth, you've got the address, you've got the driver's license number, right? You've got uh, contacts in the household. Um, some uh, uh, agencies store a credit card number and a note, uh, which we advise that you don't do that, but some people do. But let's say somebody got access to that account and they got access to that information. What would that do to your agency? How, how would that impact you? I, I would assume it'd be pretty bad. So multi-factor authentication stops that. It stops people from being able to get in. So if your password gets leaked and somebody's able to get your password to your EasyLinux account with multi-factor authentic authentication being there, you, you don't have to worry about it because they still have to enter a code through text or email to get into the site, right? Uh, if you think about it, uh, multi-factor authentication is really good at reducing about almost 100% of hacks in people's accounts. And, Another thing that's really important with it is if you think about it, today's age, we're, a lot of people are working remotely from home, right? People are working on their own personal devices, uh, and it's, it's important that if they're going to be on your personal device, that you want to make sure that when you're accessing our system with a lot of, you know, PII, some very important information in there, that you want to make sure that the right person is getting in. Uh, so it's really important, uh, multi-factor authentication. It, it's, it, it's why we're doing it. We're doing it to make sure that your data stays safe. 
so we just wanted to kind of relay that to everybody, let everybody know the importance of multi-factor and what's going to be going on there. Uh, and so with that, now we get to the fun part of the show. So now we're going to bring in our, my good friend, VJ, and VJ is going to talk about Commissions 2.0. And I'm trying to think, what would be the cool way to bring in VJ? How could we do this? Because he always likes to make an entrance. Uh, oh, I got it. Here, let's try this. <laughs> hey, there we are. Look at that. Hey, welcome to the show, VJ. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I'm, yep. Yeah, I'm Commissions 1.0, which everybody knows, and you're... I'm the prettier Commissions 2.0. Pretty... Okay, hold on. Hold on one sec. Yeah. Hi, everybody. You remember me. Good old Commissions 1.0. Remember all those evenings we stayed up together writing commission rules, and who knows how many there were? 100, 200? I mean, every time you had to create a rule for a producer with a split, you had to create a new rule. The lines of business, new rule. But wasn't that the fun that we had as a team, Commissions 1.0, and you, and me? I mean, wasn't that the great thing about it? I loved the inefficiencies. And I think if you think of you, me, if there was a third person who could be brought into this party, it would be inefficiency. You and I had such great times together, so we all know who I am. Good old Commissions 1.0 that doesn't make a lot of sense, but still nice. So we know who I am. Who are you? Well, before I talk about me, uh -huh. let me tell you, it's not fun in my book. Whatever you are talking, creating a lot, lot of rules. Not in our agency's book too, right? Okay, so I... And, I, and you are right, one thing, like they were spending a lot of time with having sleepless nights creating those rules. I that's get, my point. It's time to give them those times back. Okay, well, I, I'll tell you what. Talk is cheap, all right? So I understand that you say you're the prettier version and that you're more efficient, but let's actually go to the tape, huh? All right, yeah. let's go to the screen and take a look here. So here okay. we go. Everybody knows this. This is the good old Commission 1.0 table. Uh, you do have to kind of scroll for a while to see all the goals. That's I, my point. I, I, Why do they have to scroll out these many rules? Right? Well, I mean, you got to have that many rules to have them for each producer and each split that you want to do and all that type of stuff. But this is thorough, right? Okay, go and add a rule. Let's look yes. at that. So let's click interface. add a rule. Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. So really a tried and true screen. There's just some drop downs. If you keep scrolling down. Uh, so yeah, so see all the great things to select in here. And if we scroll a little bit, yeah, I do understand that some people might think that as you're scrolling through and setting all these things that you might kind of forget what you were trying to create a rule for, or where you were, or even, you know... You know, 1.0, uh, you need to see 2.0. Then you will realize what I'm talking about. All right, all right. right. Let's, let's, let's see this whole 2.0 thing, and let's see just let's how nice it my is. Rules. All right, let's check it out. Let's see if we can get Commissions 2.0 pulled up. Yeah. Oh, there well, you yeah. Right? It looks a little nice. All right, let's add a rule. Let's yes, see how... that you see a simple step-by-step yeah. Rules creation interface. Yeah. More importantly, you know, we have multiple conditions now, multiple mm -hmm. uh, values to select from, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so you get policy term, line of business, uh, a new business. You could put renewal in there. Yes, and this is very valuable, especially when agencies are paying a same commissions payout. Uh huh. When the transaction policy term type is new business and renewal, they can accomplish in one rule instead so, of creating multiple rules. Uh, so you're not having to create a rule like we did in my old system per line of business. You just sandwich it all into one if the payouts are going to be the same, right? Exactly. So less number oh. of rules leads to lesser maintenance and more efficiencies. Yeah, but right? who wants efficiency? I mean, come on. That's the fun thing about old commissions 1.0 is that, well, I guess, no, it's not really that fun. When you Again, about yes. It. So... Yeah, let's enter the payout. So if we right. go to name the rule, oh. And name the rule and you are done. And there's So a we didn't have a name in the old commission rule, the old 1.0 system. Not you have a rule one. order, there, there is no way to name a rule. And, oh, look at that. And also see a simple preview. Yeah, right? look at that. I can actually read what the rule is supposed to be. Yep. Yeah, that's more efficient than just a modal where you're selecting random stuff and you just got to remember and, what you did. How hard it was to read in those models in 1.0. Yeah, I hear Having you. to page no, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. And, and what if we go back to the main table here for commissions too? Oh, look at that. Oh, but oh, what's he doing here? I think 
Oh, you so can you can reorder, reorder by yeah. drag and drop. Yeah, that does seem nicer. I get it. And notice the search and the filter. Well, you know, in Commissions 1.0, you didn't have a search or filter. That was part of the joy of scrolling through an infinite list of rules. That yeah. was the fun part of it. And but you're saying it's inefficient. I get it. Correct. And this many agencies better. would vouch for that because where they had hundreds of rules, I having see. to scroll through the pages yep. without any search or filter, you get it. Right? I see. Oh, my gosh. So, yes. More efficiency, I guess those are the key takeaways. Better efficiency, better use of your, your agent's time. I mean, why did you create this new thing? Yeah, so see, EasyLinks always believes that agencies were spending too much time and money trying to manage their commissions. Yeah, right? we could see that from the thing I showed. Yeah, and like you saw, defining commission rules and producer payouts is an important part of any well-running shop. However, it is a cost center for the business. Yep. So yeah. between setting up complex rules and verifying payouts, agencies were spending a tremendous amount of time and money on these non-revenue generating activities. Yeah. So we decided to simplify the process and you know, streamline the commission's rules management, uh, aligning to our four pillars for profitability, productivity, you know, uh, serviceability, and it's scalability. See, uh, I might be the old commissions 1.0, but I still know our pillars. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Good one, 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 one The one thing that I still have going for me. <laughs> yes, you got that. <laughs> so um, I, I, I love it. I like what we've, we've been able to do. And like you had mentioned, it makes it easier for the agent to get in there. They spend less time and then they can focus on more important revenue generating tasks instead of having to go in and try to manage that massive list that they yeah. used to with commissions 1.0. Yeah, it's and, nice. And what's great is once they set the rules, and the rules management is the most critical aspect of the entire commissions process. Once they manage the rules very effectively like this, everything else is automatic, like commission statements processing and the reports pull the data. So it just does it for you. Yeah, we just, yeah. So thank you, VJ, for coming on and talking about commissions 2.0. I think the shirts were neat. I think we had a fun time. Yes. Uh, so the <laughs> next thing that we want to talk about before we go, and we talked about it in our last show, we talked about the automatic change request confirmation. Mm -hmm. So we highlighted it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you talk with everybody about what this is? Why, why are we doing the automatic change request confirmation? Yeah, good question, Ryan. So see, EasyLink's philosophy is simple. Like find places where agencies are spending too much time accomplishing a task mm -hmm. and then develop a way for the software to give that time back. Yeah, right? so just like with commissions 2.0. Yeah, exactly. An automatic change request is the latest feature to deliver on this process, right? EasyLinks believes, just like Commissions 2.0, uh, the commissions process, that agencies are also spending too much time processing endorsement requests, yeah. right? Uh, and yes, endorsement requests are important, but the larger your agency grows, the more time-consuming and costly this activity becomes, right? Yeah, and I, I would assume that if you have so many different things to do, certain things could slip through the cracks. You could forget to do some things. Yep. Yep, uh, exactly. And a feature like this is very critical for agencies experiencing growth and looking to scale their operations effectively, mm -hmm. right? And when software automates repetitive and automotive, uh, you know, uh, the things that can be automated, mm -hmm. the entire staff is freed up to accomplish uh, more, right? And more importantly, you know, uh, it reminds me that one agency who participated in this mm -hmm. feature in the beta process, they were able to cut down their endorsements processing time by 45%. 45%. Yeah. So through the usage of the new automatic change request confirmation, they were able to increase efficiency, yes. cut down the amount of time they had to spend on this stuff. So let me once again try to paint the picture for everybody who's viewing today. The whole workflow, what happens is they put in a change request. They wait for the change request to come downloaded into the system. And then when it comes in, the system will compare what's there with the download, and if it matches, it just closes it out and confirms it. Yes. What happens if it doesn't match? If it doesn't match, that's where there are exceptions, right? Okay. So the uh, agent has to review, so we create a task for the agent. Oh, okay. But more importantly, the agents are not reviewing every single request. They are reviewing only the exceptions. Well, right? I mean, that, that's that's the, the efficiency part, right? Exactly. You're, you're not having to actually sit there and go through things that are okay. I mean, if I know that this is okay and this is good, why do I want to look at it, yep. right? Yeah, exactly. So they're only focusing on the important things where there is a difference. Yes, yes, yes. And this 45% example that we saw, they were mm -hmm. able to cut down this time. 
because such a substantial portion of their change requests are now being confirmed automatically, mm -hmm. like you said, the agents in that agency were able to focus on um, revenue generating activities. Mm -hmm. right? So we give, gave them the time back to them. Right. That and seems like a big push that we have now in our system. The idea that we are trying to utilize technology to exactly. automate as many remedial processes or, or non-revenue generating processes as possible so that people can get back to the important things. Exactly. And it, like we talked about, it again aligns with the four key pillars, right? Uh, the four key pillars of improving agency pro productivity, serviceability, scalability, and uh, profitability. There you go. <laughs> oh, I thought at one point I was going to be able to swoop in there and get another one, but I guess not. <laughs> yeah, they, they are at the core of EasyLynx, uh, these pillars. And these pillars shape the way we innovate and drive us to improve the businesses and lives of our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to do. Okay, VJ. Thanks for Thanks. coming on the show. You, I really <laughs> appreciate you coming on. I think I think everybody out there would say that this was a fun way to explain commissions 1.0 and 2.0. And obviously, commissions 2.0 looks a lot better. And it ties into that whole thing that we've been talking about in a lot of previous shows about efficiency in the system through automation. Uh, so that you can get back to the important things. So, Vijay, once again, thanks for coming on today. Thank you so much. Really Ryan. appreciate it. Thank you. Next time, we could have maybe like Thriller playing or something like that. You could come, you'd come in dancing or something like that. We're like We used yeah. to do it the, the agent links, right? Yes, yes. We'll do that sometime. <laughs> okay. All right. So, that, that's all the time we have for the show today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, like we say here in Texas, we'll see you all next time. Bye.